This right here is the LG Wing. If you're familiar with this channel, you will be familiar with this phone. I have been using this phone on and off uh, for a very long time. I haven't been daily driving it as much just because it's honestly getting kind of old and it is really tough to uh, go up to one of the Snapdragon 8 processors and then back to something like this. But I still love this phone and I still stand by today that this is a better multitasking functionality than a folding phone. And today uh, we've got a little bit of a special treat because Linus from LTT went the entire month of November using the LG Wing. So we are going to take a look at that video, see what he thought after using it for 30 days. All right, so I know that all he's going to do is just crap on this phone because that's what he has to do for the views. And let's be honest, there's not much that he can say that is good about this phone just because of how old it's getting. It's not going to be an, ex an exciting, super fun experience for a lot of people, but I I'm just getting ready for a, a negative storm of comments here. About a month ago, I made two very bad decisions back to back. First, I went swimming with my cell phone. And then Never second, I tasked yeah, you guys fair with phone. picking the replacement for me. Right out of the gate, the winner was clear, and oh, I got okay. to work migrating my life to the Fairphone 5, which, <laughs> hey! Oh, Reddit. Beautiful. What did you do? The LG Wing? You got me, guys. But for better or for worse, I'm a man of my word, so I really have been daily driving this thing for the last month. And there are a lot of things I hate about it, you absolute trolls. However, <laughs> let's uh, let's just see what they said there. Yes, the weirder the better. I hope someone would do this. I voted just to spite Linus. Yep. Unexpectedly, there were some things just I genuinely liked, even if just none of them over had to do with the unique screen layout or to do with our sponsor. Just like that. I don't know. Oh, it's wrong again. Don't I like the layout. Okay. Where do you even okay. begin with this thing? Have you ever found yourself wishing that you had a selfie stick that was about three inches long and permanently attached to your phone? <laughs> Three well, inches long. <laughs> you just invented to be the fair, LG Wing. That's... I think it's fair to say that calling the secondary screen kind of useless would be an act of generosity on par with declaring Jibo to be the invention of the year. For real. The best thing that I can say about the swivel screen feature is that it was relatively easy to ignore. <laughs> or at least it would have if the phone it was attached to wasn't so all around bad. But we'll get back to that it's, in a bit. It's old. It's it not bad. It started out pretty okay. The first legit use I found for the wing form factor was watching TV on the top screen while scrolling the news on the bottom. So a real nice. world 50% increase in usable screen real estate. Unfortunately, that only kept me entertained for about 10, 15 minutes before I realized, wait, I don't like reading in old CRT TV form factor. I want to go back to portrait and just use picture in picture like I always have. One thing I didn't get sick of though was using the wing to show my phone to other people. Okay, okay, right. but see like here, in this is Linus. This is where you're wrong. This is where you don't know what's going on. All right, watch this. You take, you take two apps. You can put them together. All right, we've we've got a video up here. We've got we've got our our text down here. Right, Linus. Flip it, flip it to the side, flip it to the side, and then and then you switch them. All right, are you ready? Boom, you flip it to the side. Now you can read on your portrait mode while you're watching something. This is the best form factor. It gives you options. All right, let's keep watching. An old CRT TV form factor. I want to go back to portrait and just use picture in picture like I always have. One thing I didn't get sick of though was using the wing to show my phone to other people. To be fair. This is a to be fair, I do that a lot. Objectively much easier than this. Or at least it is until you want to try to change the volume. Back here? Really? Oh, another good thing though. The it fits nicely in a couple. I'll give him that. The volume buttons are not greatly placed, but they do have on-screen controls on the second screen that do make that a little bit easier. Okay, but seriously though, 
I was surprised by how much thought LG clearly put into developing not just the hardware, but even the software that could take advantage of it. Like, look at this. The first time you deploy the screen, you'll be greeted with a tutorial that explains all the different cool ways that you can use it. Bookmarking your favorite landscape apps to the swivel menu, configuring them to utilize the second screen in a variety of ways, including opening two apps at the same time, more on that later, or even expanding individual apps to the second screen, which is objectively super cool. Or, I don't know, at least it would be if the experience if wasn't comically works, bad just about every time I tried to use it. To be clear, LG's own apps can be an okay experience. The camera app, for example, has this gimbal mode that mimics the experience of using a camera on a motorized stabilizer mount. Pretty neat, right? I mean, in practice, no. the resulting video is pretty low resolution since LG is using digital zoom to enable their software stabilization, but it definitely achieves a different look and feel compared to a typical phone camera. And it's got. This is actually one of those things that I've always hated about the LG Wing is that when the camera is this way, you can record in 4K. When it is this way, it's recording 4K vertically. So that means when you go like this, it's still recording 4K vertically and not horizontally. So why would I want to use the gimbal mode without my 4K camera? Like it just doesn't make sense. When the better way to shoot video, the higher quality way of shooting video is like this, but then they give you all these fancy features to use gimbal mode like this, just it, it, that's the camera is always one of, the, one of those things that bugged me. Got a built-in handle. The problem is that third-party apps, even some of the ones that were included in the swivel menu by default, struggle to make use of the Wing's unique screen layout. YouTube, for instance, is obviously designed to run in portrait. I mean, look at all this blank space while you're browsing content in landscape. And no effort has been made to move secondary elements, like comments, for example, to the bottom screen. And that's far from the worst of it. Check out what happens when I try to go back from a full screen video with my swiping from the side navigation gesture. <laughs> um, hello? <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. Now, I've never had anything like Access that happen. Know, at least until you go to search for a destination. Mm, ergonomic. And it gets even worse. After struggling to think of any other app that might benefit from launching in landscape mode all the time, I settled on TeamViewer, only to quickly realize that LG's warning about unpredictable behavior on non-optimized apps, and if you remember that's all of them, was well justified. My fingerprint wouldn't read, more on that later, and I couldn't find any way to get the pin pad to open, locking me out of the app completely. <laughs> but Linus, what about the two separate apps though? Actually, this one felt a lot more practical to me. I mean, who can hate having extra screen real estate? Now, obviously, it's not the same as a foldable where you can just seamlessly expand your working space. But there were times that I was extremely grateful to have the inner screen. Like, okay, you know how it's gone out of fashion to let you copy part of the text in a messaging app? Well, with the wing, if someone sent me a phone number or a street address, for example, I could just throw their message up on one screen and then transcribe it directly into my Maps app on the other. Unfortunately, that's about it. Or, okay, not quite. There's this bottom screen trackpad mode and you can have a mouse cursor on the top. That's pretty cool coming back to a remote desktop, but I'd say any improvement in productivity from that is probably offset by the fact that the keyboard doesn't automatically open on the bottom screen, but rather opens like this, giving you a teeny tiny little space to work with. Speaking of. Yeah, so the trackpad is a little bit gimmicky. I don't know why you would want a mouse on a phone. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The keyboard also has been one of those really, really weird things. Now, I don't know which keyboard he's using, um, but that's one of those things that the LG keyboard um, will 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 do a lot better than any other keyboard. If you want to download a different keyboard, um, you know, download the Google keyboard. It it does not work at all. the The LG keyboard will jump down to the second screen though. So I'm not sure if if that's the one he's using or. Open on the bottom screen. 
See, check this out, Linus. Using the LG keyboard. Look at that, it popped down there. <laughs> you got it? Give the LG Wing credit where credit is due. If you use the LG keyboard, which isn't great, I'll give you that, but it does work. Green, but rather opens like this, giving you a teeny tiny little space to work with. Speaking of automatically, uh, Android Auto didn't work at all for me. The prompt to connect would come up, but then the wing would just sit mm. there and buzz ineffectually until it got bored. And I Now this is one of those things that I have not tried. I don't think I had my car with Android Auto when I was actively using this every day, but maybe that's something I'll have to go try. I tried everything, rebooting the Kind of sounds like a car, him problem. A different cable, uh, forcing the uninstallation of the updates and then reapplying them. I finally gave up. And then Three days later, it randomly popped up a message when I plugged <laughs> it into my car just to charge, and it's worked flawlessly ever since. I have no explanation for that other than, I don't know, maybe it got an update. But for real though, I was pleasantly surprised to find that the Wing is not only running Android 13, but is still getting pretty regular patches. I got two while I was using it. Now you might remember that LG got out of the phone game way back in 2021, but they promised Wing owners at least three OS upgrades plus patches and they seem to be keeping their word. The OS was generally pretty responsive, and I didn't encounter any generally. unexpected compatibility issues, even when using apps on the Wing display. If it works in landscape, it works on the Wing. They also took a really cool approach to carrier and manufacturer bloatware. Which, when he says when it works in landscape, it works on the Wing, this is why I love this format, because people are already making all of their apps in landscape. Guess what they're not making? Square tablet format. Uh, foldables are not what people are already making, but everybody has already made their app go sideways so that you could turn your phone and use it that way. That's all the LG Wing does. As part of the setup process, you just opt out of anything that you don't want instead of having to go hunt them down and neutralize them in the app tray later. And this is an approach I would love to see adopted by phone makers that still exist. Raising the question, if they can ship up to date software, why don't they still exist? Well, see, the thing is, updated software doesn't mean good software. There wasn't a quick access icon in the shade for the hotspot feature, so you gotta dig through the menu like a pleb if you wanna share your connection. The phone app is super overzealous and turns the screen off the instant you start a call, regardless of the state of the proximity sensor. So if you need to punch in an extension or mash zero trying to get to a human in a phone tree, you need to convince the wing to turn the screen back on and allow your input, which by the way, was a serious problem with the device the entire time I had it. I don't know if we're gonna be able to capture this in B-roll, but it felt like a solid 25% of the time I wanted to wake the device, I had to press the bloody button two or three times to get it to actually accept a finger. Uh, I've never had that problem. The second I turn on the camera. <laughs> Sorting your apps in the drawer also feels a little broken. You can just sort them alphabetically like on any other phone, but then anything installed afterward is going to be just plonked onto the end out of order until you sort it again. Resort them again. Yeah, that's Genius. what happens. Speaking of apps, while the software that comes on the phone works pretty well on this unique aspect ratio, anything else that you download is gonna be pretty hit or miss. Some apps just don't size well to the smaller screen and most of them have no native multi-screen support. Uninstalling apps also had its snags, though it's hard to tell if this is an LG thing or just a not Samsung thing. When I delete an app from the app drawer, I just get unceremoniously dumped back to the home screen every single time. I can mm. see how if you're removing just one app, okay. that's probably fine. Yeah, not a big like deal. If you're like me and you only periodically clean up the unneeded apps from your phone, it can get kind of annoying after the third or I feel like that's a real small thing. And going back to where it is that you want to be. So good job, Samsung, I guess, and do better everyone else, especially LG. <laughs> My biggest issue with the Wing software was the overnight restarts. It happened about three times during my month that the phone would just randomly reboot in the middle of the night, which shouldn't be a big deal. I mean, lots of phones reboot in the night to install updates and stuff like that. 
except that on the wing, my notifications would just stop working until I unlocked the phone again in the morning. At which time, all my notifications would come flooding in, which caused me to miss a couple of morning <laughs> meetings. But that's probably enough time spent beating up the software. Hmm. Given that I need to save some again, time to I don't think I ever, hardware too. I ever experienced that. Phones, the wing is it's heavy. heavy. I, mean, I get it. You gotta have enough structure in there to keep it is it on, big. But it is screens rigid, a thick, then, heavy phone. With all that work you put into it, how does it end up feeling so loose? I mean, seriously, guys, we went out of our way to get our hands on a <laughs> brand new device in order to ensure that the hinge wouldn't just be busted from the previous owner. I mean, but after just a month on this thing, mine doesn't feel that bad. Phone closed. Uh, I mean, I get it. Rattling under your fingers. Oh, and that's a him thing. The thing I, I've the had mine for years. Shift a little bit under Does your not fingers. feel like that. Just the way it's supposed <laughs> to swing, but the other way too. Almost nope. makes me want to just get in there with an LTT screwdriver and tighten things up. I, d I don't have that, guys. I don't oh, have that. And don't get me started on the fingerprint sensor. Fingerprint this sensor is not great. The worst fingerprint sensor that I have ever encountered. I'll agree right with him now there. Because of course it is. I'm trying to show you guys something. But your fingers need to be exactly, and exactly, the same level of clean and moisturized that you were when you first set it up. And you've got to get the location. And I found even the pressure sometimes. I will give him that. Like seriously, it works. Putting a screen protector on it makes worse. 50% of the time for me. And that includes five attempts. Like I would. I, I will completely agree. And that is why I have the pin and not a fingerprint reader. The, the fingerprint reader is not great. Often have to enter the pin. And if you flip out the wing display, well, that just ramps the difficulty up to hard mode <laughs> since it especially seemed to struggle when you tried to use it in a different orientation than your original scan. It's kind of it weird. It also reveals another problem. The design of this phone, even if it was practical, captures a ton of dust on the inner screen here. I've never really worried of, of the I've screen, never had that problem. Here where the earpiece is. Never the had that problem. Then scratches the crap. Are you serious? I've I've never had that problem. Guys, I promise. Look at this. I've I've never cleaned behind this thing. I've 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 never cleaned back there. That it, there's no dust. There's no dust. I've never gotten dust at this thing. What? Out of these slides around the edges of the upper screen and on the bezels of the lower screen, and even though this phone was new, yeah. out of box when we got okay, it. Okay, okay. So I probably have a little bit of that. A little bit of like scratching. Can you, all right, all right. Where where do I go with this? Can you, you see that scratches? Those like. There you go. You can see the little, the little circle lines right there. Really? Again, I've had this for literal years at this point, and that's that's what I've got. There's gonna there's gonna be some wear and tear, Linus. After just a month, not only do we have scratches on there, but even a few that are starting to form right here on the bottom screen. I don't, what are you, what are you doing, Linus? What are you doing that after a month that's happening for you? I have nothing on my bottom screen. It is the cleanest screen on a phone I've ever had. I don't. That is pretty brutal. And You're pretty brutal, Linus. Over, by the way, now seems like a good time to check out the physical buttons. Using these <laughs> with the screen open is basically impossible, especially if basically. you fingers. And to top it all off, the thing isn't even fidget friendly. I mean, you can open it one-handed, but closing yeah. it is a bit of a challenge, especially if you have smaller hands. Like, look, I can do it. I'll, I'll agree with that. It, it, I mean, I ended up doing this a lot, just to, just, just going like that a lot. Not, not like opening it and closing it. Oh, I can't close it. But like, I, I would just play with it a lot like that. But yeah, he's he's right. It's not super fidget friendly. Do it, but boy, is that ever a risky maneuver. The thing is, if the <laughs> Wing was an otherwise great phone with this gimmick, I wouldn't even be complaining. 
but using it for this last month has just been a nightmare. It is full of compromises, even compared to my older Samsung Note 9. It's got a weak mono speaker, no headphone jack, this weird ripple effect on the screen that's especially noticeable on light backgrounds, and while they've- What? Dude, Linus, you, you got a bad, you got a bad model, bro. Like, I'm not gonna say that you're gonna have a better experience with a, a different one, but like half this stuff that you're talking about, it's either stuff that you did or it is, or it is, you got a lemon, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Carved out enough space for three rear facing cameras, they're all wide angle? What is up with that? <laughs> the pop up front facing camera is kind of nifty but it's also one of the most reported trouble points with the device, which feels like an especially- It's not. It's not. Go find anybody that uses the wing. <laughs> Pop-up camera, working just fine. Everybody that I have seen that is still talking about the LG wing regularly has zero issues with the pop-up camera. Nobody has issues with the pop-up camera. That's what everybody's freaking out that like, this is such a solid built phone even after so many years because they tried so many different things and they got so many different moving parts. Nobody's having problems with that. Actually unnecessary cell phone when they could have just, I don't know, kept the front camera behind the swiveling screen alongside the earpiece speaker. Which, okay, that's actually not a great solution. Not everyone wants to take a selfie with the screen and landscape like this, but it does highlight an interesting design compromise that was made to accommodate the sliding screen. Look how thin that front screen is. That is crazy. There is no room to put a camera in there or even a speaker. So what they did was they put the speaker here and then they just stabbed a hole in the front screen and did the engineering <laughs> equivalent of cupping their hand on it. Absolute genius. <laughs> the battery life was okay? Not great, just okay, which I guess is gonna have to pass as a high note to leave the video off on. I'm honestly just happy the month is over and I can finally move on to my pick, the Fairphone 5. And you guys can finally move on with this segue to our sponsor. All right, all right. Okay. So Linus made some interesting points. He definitely highlighted some things that I think were were issues, but he made them into really, really big deals. But then he didn't even highlight where this was actually good. Again, he never talked about the ability to turn it the other way and use the screen this way. Um, the, the thing is, is he talked about this being a selfie stick. And even if that's what you're using it as, I'm not gonna lie, the amount of times that I have been laying in bed and held my phone like this to be able to watch a video, this is so much easier to hold than this. Don't tell me that you would rather hold your phone like this. This, even if you turn the second screen off, this is such a nice way to hold your phone to watch a video. I, that right there, th this multitasking is by far the best that I have ever had. If you'd like to hear more about my full experience of mostly good things, make sure you click this video right here. It is getting a little bit old now. It is my 2023 version. If you'd like me to do it for 2024, let me know uh, down in the comments.